and we're recording. In this video I would like to explain the need for reactive streams and something called back pressure. And I'm going to start off with a very mundane example which is of moving house. So suppose this is the house that we are moving from and we have a lot of boxes that we're busily packing inside our house and we have a small removals truck. Here it is, reverses up, da, 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 da. and uh, we have, of course, um, someone to help us uh, load the removals truck. And so we start packing our boxes and we start sticking them out on the driveway. There we go, packed box, and another one, and, and another one. And meanwhile, as we're packing boxes, the removalist starts to put them onto the van in uh, spaces that they can find. And so we're, we're putting them out on the driveway and he's taking them from the driveway and putting them into the van. Only we are super, super fast and he isn't. And uh, there we go, he's, he's got things uh, packed up and he's got a full van and we are still packing boxes and we are still throwing things out on the driveway and he's got a full van and he hops in the van and he drives away. And there we are, still packing boxes, throwing them out on the driveway. And of course, wouldn't you know it, the rain comes. And all our boxes are soaked and ruined. Okay, that doesn't work terribly well. Uh, we end up with an awful lot of wet, soggy boxes, soggy belongings. Let's try that again as to how these things actually tend to happen when you have a remove list. And so... Um, there we are inside the house and it's still still sunny hopefully uh, so let's take the cloud away and we are uh, busy working away trying to pack our boxes and the, the the van only has a certain amount of space in it and uh, the, the, the the remove list or at least the friend or whoever it is that we've got loading the truck says oh can you give me three more boxes and we're packing them and we're loading them out on the driveway and he's putting them on the, onto the truck and uh, so we, we, we get a few out there, however fast, and he manages to move them onto the truck. And then once he's got them on the truck, he says, I've got space for another two. Uh, we, we, we're still packing boxes and we've maybe kept them in the garage and we've, uh, we bring out another two. And he loads them on and he drives away. And we are not so foolish as to stick boxes out on the driveway in the open air when there's clouds coming along and it's about to rain and there's no removal truck to load them onto. So what's the difference? Well the difference is that our removal truck and our person on the removal truck was able to give us some back pressure. They was able to tell us this is how much I've got space for. I've got space for another two, not another 20. Don't throw 20 boxes out on the driveway. Just give me another two. And so that was how we managed it, that we didn't end up with soggy soaking boxes on the driveway. All right, let's take our removals example away and show how that relates to a fairly common uh, situation that uh, programmers face. And in this case, it's going to be one of web development. Um, so let me move my paperwork and let me bring in a different piece of paper. Here I have my web development set up and so uh, if I point to a few bits of it, over here I've got my database and over here I've got my server running my, my application, my wonderfully crafted oh so useful uh, system that people are logging into, uh, whether it's you know group messaging, social network, who knows what it is. And up here, well we've got uh, and I've just shown one of them at the moment. We, we, we've got some clients connected to our server and they're, they're doing stuff. And you'll notice there's a, a big fat network connection between my server and my database. They're probably in the same data center and they can throw um, data to and fro between them really, really quickly. And you'll notice there's a really skinny connection over here between the server and the client. And the server, well, the servers have a certain amount of memory in them, and let's call that buffer. And so suppose a request comes in that could consume lots and lots of data. Well, the database has a nice big fat pipe, and it can start throwing data 
out into this buffer as fast as you like while the buffer can only send a few bits that way and uh, sure enough uh, after a while we may have overfilled our buffer and bang out of memory it crashes um, so this is where back pressure is needed this we've got some request that is going to stream lots and lots of data from here all the way through to here but this bit is a lot fatter than this bit and so somehow we need to push some pressure going backwards that um, if you like says give me three more boxes or I've got space for another two so that the consumer can limit the rate at which the producer keeps pushing stuff out uh, onto that uh, onto that stream and so that is the problem that reactive streams uh, attempt to solve and we will have a look in the code at uh, how they do that